Father, how often we put our faith in things that don't help us. We put our faith in men and they fail us. We put our faith in riches and they become corrupted or they're stolen and they don't satisfy and they can't help us. But when we find faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we find the saviour of the world, someone who has paid the penalty for sin, someone who cannot be taken from us, someone whose work is perfect, someone who enables us to lay up treasure in heaven where moth and rust do not corrupt and where thieves don't break through and steal. Therefore, Father, help us to be confident of this, that if we have faith in Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven, we have hope of heaven, and we have everlasting life. Father, thank you for your wonderful and exceedingly great mercies and gifts towards men in Jesus Christ, your Son. And we commend ourselves to you now in his precious name. Amen. Welcome to the Spurgeon's Devotional Bible, a Christian podcast desiring to honour the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the devotion for August the 10th, Put Not Your Trust in Princes. 1 Samuel 8 verses 1 and 3 to 22. And it came to pass, when Samuel was old, that he made his sons judges over Israel, and his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after Lucre, and took bribes and perverted judgment. Spurgeon says, Grace does not run in the blood. An honoured father may have disgraceful sons. Perhaps Samuel was wrong in making his sons judges, for we do not read that the Lord made them so. Great men ought not to injure the church or state by putting their sons into offices which they are not fit to fill. Verse 4, Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel, and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel, when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. Spurgeon says, This little sentence is most instructive. When we are perplexed or displeased, we should resort at once to prayer. Constantly we read of the prayers of the Lord Jesus. We ought to imitate him in this. As the fish loves the stream and the bird the bow, so the believer loves prayer. Verse 7. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. Now therefore hearken unto their voice, howbeit yet protest solemnly unto them, and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. Spurzen says, If they would have their way, they should have it. But they were to be warned of the consequences that they might not act in ignorance. Many things which men's hearts lust after will be their curse, and although God allows them to have their heart's desire, it is in anger and it brings them small content. Verse 10. And the Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked of him a king. And he said, This will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for himself for his chariots and to be his horsemen, and some shall run before his chariots. And he will appoint him captains over thousands and captains over fifties and will set them to ear his ground, and to reap his harvest, and to make his instruments of war, and instruments of his chariots. And he will take your daughters to be confectionaries, and to be cooks, and to be bakers. And he will take your fields, and your vineyards, and your olive yards, even the best of them, and give them to his servants. And he will take the tenth of your seed, and of your vineyards, and give to his officers, and to his servants. And he will take your men servants, and your maid servants and your goodliest young men, and your asses, and put them to his work. He will take the tenth of your sheep, and ye shall be his servants. And ye shall cry out in that day because of your king, which ye shall have chosen you, and the Lord will not hear you in that day. Spurgeon says, Under the government of God they had been free from exactions and taxations, but if they chose to put their ne necks under the yoke, they would have to keep them there. When Christians are free from anxiety, they had better keep so. Let us not run into spiritual bondage willfully. King Jesus, it is delightful to serve, but it is hard to serve men or live for ambition, wealth or custom. Verse 19. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us, that we also may be like all the nations, and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. And Samuel heard all the words of the people, 
and he re rehearsed them in the ears of the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, Hearken unto their voice, and make them a king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, Go ye every man unto his city. Spurgeon says, God save us from having our prayers heard as theirs were. O Lord, if we ask anything amiss of thee, be pleased in mercy to refuse us. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Amen.